And now here with more on the elections just 12 hours ahead of Israel's third consecutive national vote in a year. We are joined by none other than columnist for Newsweek and the editor of HistoryCentral.com, Mark Shulman, and the founder and executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies, Dr. Martin Sherman. Thank you both so much for coming in. Uh, Good to be with you. Now, Mark, I actually want to start with you. What are your latest predictions with just hours to go? I predict we'll end up exactly where we were last time. Maybe the Likud will get one more, one more seat. I think there'll be maybe one change in the Gush. It's really hard to say. This is an election of turnout. We really have no idea. Um, for a while, for it looked like for a couple of days, um, Likud was on a run and was starting to get closer, but that seemed to have switched around Friday. I think, he, I think Netanyahu probably oversold the fact that he was in, in the lead and he scared enough people on the left to think, well, maybe we should come out. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody I've spoken to in the last uh, two or three days who previously had voted for other parties, I mean, people who are on the left side of center or whatever, who voted for other parties other than Blue and White, who voted for Meretz or Labor or even the Mishrutaf, almost every single person I've spoken to in the last three days has said they're going to Blue and White primarily because of the scare that Netanyahu gave. Right. So he may have doubly um, caused his own downfall if it ends up that way, on one hand on the Arab vote by getting the Arab vote up, which is what he's done the last, two, the last election, and then this, we'll see what happens this time, and by getting the left suddenly to be very scared and worried by trying to push the right and saying just a little bit more, a little bit more, we'll get there, he may have gotten the other side all involved. Well, you know, the, the real unknowns here is what's going to happen with Lieberman, whether the electorate finally will come to its senses and punish Lieberman for being the, fact, the, being the basic uh, or principal factor that responsible for these repeated elections. Because if it wasn't for Lieberman, if Lieberman had basically honored his pledge in the first election, there would have been a government. And, uh, and basically what Lieberman is doing now is holding the country to hostage because it's almost inconceivable that he could join a government that is dependent on merits and certainly dependent on the Arabs, whether it's their tacit or active support. Uh, so Lieberman is one of the big unknowns. The other, the, the other thing is whether at the last minute Netanyahu will manage to convince in the next few hours Otsmal uh, Israel to, to uh, withdraw from the thing because they could, they, they, they could, they could easily uh, pull in a mandate, maybe two mandates, uh, which would uh, mm. be lost. So, uh, you know, you know I, I think well, what we're seeing though is this, this uh, sustained support for Netanyahu is a massive vote of non-confidence of no confidence in the in, in the, the law enforcement agencies here. Because this is most remarkable. The man, Netanyahu, has indictments against him, well, and he's, he's strong, is a strong, if not stronger than ever, and certainly uh, by far and away the, 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 the favorite, the preferred candidate for prime minister. All right, well, something you've both touched on is actually the Arab joint list, which is looking to get uh, stronger now. It's already the third strongest party. It's looking to gain even more seats, more votes, uh, in the Knesset after this election. Now, you mentioned that uh, Netanyahu is essentially strengthening them with his rhetoric. Could that be, and I'm thinking way out into the conspiracy theories at this point, but could it be that Netanyahu is intentionally giving rhetoric to strengthen the Arab parties that, in a sense, weakens the left-wing bloc? No, I don't think so, because let's, let's look at it this way. The issue is turnout. In other words, the turnout amongst the Arab, the Arab Israelis vote 85% for the joint list. Only about 15% vote for other parties. So what's been happening... Which says a lot about the Arab vote. What, what's been happening is the fact is that by Netanyahu's rhetoric, he's been turning up the, the number of his Arab Israelis that have turned out. They grew to 67%, almost equivalent to the Jewish turnout in this last election. The general sense is they're going to come even higher this time. So no, I don't think there's a conspiracy theory here. I think the reality is he used them um, as a method of um, you know, trying to show that he's Mr. Right, etc., Right wing, I mean, right in that sense. And it's boomerang in the sense that they've become stronger and stronger. I mean, the whole irony of all of this is remember the fact that the reason the joint list even exists is because Lieberman was trying to get rid of some of the Arab parties. And the result, they came together as a joint list. And then as a joint list, they become stronger and stronger. So uh, I think we're going to see them stronger. And I think, quite honestly, one of the scenarios is clearly the fact that uh, a Gantz government will start with their abstaining on the outside. I think people don't understand the Israeli How, system what, what, to understand. What, 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 guns, what guns I, I, would that be? I don't think that people understand the way the system works in this country. A country once the government is voted in, um, as long as it passes a budget, you can't vote it out. 
uh, unless you have an alternative government in mind. So the reality is they won't be dependent on their vote. Once they know that all they have to do is get in and pass a quick vote, budget, and then they're, then they're in for a year. Right. And so nothing else can happen. But what, what, what government is Gantz going to put together? Gantz cannot put a government together without the, the support, either, either explicit or implicit, of the, of the Arabs. Now, for Lieberman to go along with that, that's really suicide. He said he, had, he, said he wouldn't. Gantz will say time and time again, he won't set up a government with the, the passive or active support of the Arabs. How is he going to form a government? How is he going to form a government? You know, the, 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 the question is, if the Likud, if the Likud strengthens now, and there will be, tr and, and, Lieberman, and Lieberman is weakened. There'll be tremendous pressure on him. I want to understand what's, sorts of what's wrong with the passive support of, of the Arab. I'll I don't tell you understand. what's wrong with it. The, the Arab list shouldn't even be able to run because their, their, their platform violates the letter and the spirit of the right. basic law because they explicitly state they're against Israel right. as the nation state of the Jews. I'm surprised that you, that you even... Well, the, it'll, the, be, the, well, it'll be very interesting to see tomorrow what the results end up actually being and to see whether or not this math actually checks out. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have. Gentlemen, thank you so much again for coming in today.